Now, if you've been around for the past couple of years, you'll know that I made a footstool for my office from a log, cut it out with a chainsaw. And the special thing about the log was that it was spalted maple, so it looked really cool. And when I cut the center out of that, I actually saved that piece. And it's been sitting out on my front porch for the past year. And what I did was I coated the ends with wax from a toilet seal, actually. A new one, that is, not a used one. And I melted that onto the ends to seal them so it wouldn't dry out as quickly and crack as much. And of course, it did still crack, but maybe not as much as it would have if I hadn't done this. And I've never turned a spherical shape on the lathe before. And I recently built a new stand for the lathe, so I really wanted to try it out. I had a lot of people asking how stable it is and whatnot. So I figured this would be a pretty decent test of that. This hunk of wood here is pretty hefty and it's a lot bigger than I'd normally turn on a lathe. So the first step is to get this wax off before it gets all over everything that I have here. I got as much off as I could on the big end and then I flipped it over and I scraped off the small end. And lesson learned here, never use wax like this at least to seal the end of a piece of wood. So anyway, I have to measure this to see how big of a sphere I can get out of it. And measuring across, I can see the smallest it is, is nine inches. So I'll mark out a rough center for that. And then I'll use my beam compass to draw a circle on this end. And then I can bring it over to the bandsaw and cut away as much as I possibly can to make this into a cylinder. I could probably turn it in this rough shape here, but it'd be a lot more work. It's a lot easier to cut away the excess on the bandsaw before I get started on turning. So the cut went smoothly, and despite how uneven the ends of these are, when I flip it over, the measurement is basically the same. Now onto the fun stuff, or at least it's fun for me. I know that watching turning videos is not very entertaining for a lot of people, but it really is enjoyable when you're doing it. Unless, of course, something goes wrong, and hopefully that doesn't happen here. But we're going to catch it on film anyway, so at least we can all have a good laugh. So I've got the blank mounted in the lathe, and I've got the lathe turned down to its slowest speed. And there is a little bit of vibration and bounce here, but that's not unexpected. This is a heavy block of wood, and it's not at all balanced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the end here and face that off relatively flat. And I'm sure a lot of you will notice that I'm using a regular half inch chisel for this. That's the way I learned how to use the lathe in the beginning. And it works for me and I don't have a problem doing it. But I don't recommend that you do it. You should use the proper turning tools whenever you're doing this kind of work. And then when I had that end cleaned up, that fixed the worst of the balance problems. So I moved the tool rest back to the front to work on the face. And all I'm trying to do here is to take off enough to just make it balance. And this will actually give me the outside diameter of the ball that I'll be able to get from this. My guess is that it's gonna be somewhere around eight inches. Now that it's even more balanced, I can start to turn the actual ball shape. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the way I'm turning here. Like I said, I use regular chisels, but what I'm doing is I'm using them like a scraper. And since the wood that I'm using is dry, that works well. It won't work, of course, for green wood. And basically how I do this is I do it in steps. I don't try to take too much material at one time and I'll just work my way across, taking little nibbles, I guess you could say, as I go. Now this is probably slower than you could do with a roughing gouge, but then I don't have one. And like I said, I didn't learn using a roughing gouge. I learned using this way. So I figure it's best to go with what you know. I'm working on this side over here first because it has this big gaping hole and I figure if I cut most of that away then I can jack up the speed just a little bit and make the cutting more efficient. So what I did was I cut out a piece of plywood in a half circle shape and I'll use this as a template as I'm turning the piece. After I had the majority of the turning done, I took the ball off and remounted it, but this time I made a cup for it to fit into so that I could turn off the ends. And then after I had that done, I did some sanding right on the lathe with the machine, and then I finished the sanding after I took it off. Now for a finish on this, I want to keep it simple. I like what boiled linseed oil does to this spalted maple when you put it on. 
And then I'll probably follow that up with something a little bit harder, maybe two or three coats of a Danish oil. And as for the stand, that's actually just the piece of wood that I used to clamp the ball in the lathe after I took it off centers. I also used that to hold the ball while I was sanding it. And I like the overall proportions of it, so I just fancied it up a little bit. Now you might be asking, what's the purpose of this ball, John? And it really doesn't serve any purpose other than looking good, I think. I guess you could call it some kind of an art piece because it's definitely decorative. However, it is almost precisely the size of a bowling ball. So all I need to do is drill three holes in here and bring it to the nearest bowling alley and see if I can throw a strike with it.